benefits, you know, at a site, you want to make sure that, you know, you do have the correct address. I uh, highly recommend to at least arriving there 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you know, most of us do live here in California and we know traffic here is horrible. Um, technology, you know, you want to make sure, like I mentioned, you, know, you want to make sure that whatever platform they give you um, for you guys to sign in, it is working properly. Um, for instance, say if you are going to do a Zoom interview and you are using a uh, your phone, for example, your iPhone, it can be a little bit uh, glitchy if you're going to try to do uh, that. So I highly recommend try doing it on your PC or um, any laptop that you have. Also having um, really good lighting, like for instance, me, for example, right now I'm using a ring light. You wanna make sure that you are visible and your background is fully clear. Um, another thing too, you wanna know who's in the meeting. Uh, you wanna do your research. You, what if it's the HR uh, specialist that's gonna be uh, interviewing you? Or what if it's you know the CEO or the hiring manager? You wanna do some research on who is interviewing so you are a little bit more prepared. Right, and then um, next slide, I'm gonna pass it over to uh, Kirsten. She's gonna go into debts on attire and how to properly dress for the interview. Thank you, Cisco. Um, so regardless if it is a virtual interview in person or even one of the interviews that Lee was talking about before, the kind of the one-way interview, we still want to be able to be dressed for an interview. So when you're interviewing for a healthcare position, it is completely fine to wear scrubs because People are understanding that you might be taking the interview on a break or right after work or right before work. You know, just making sure that you're presentable. Um, having your clothes like be nice and neat and clean and making sure that you are just aware of, even if it's on Zoom, how you look. Uh, you know, making sure that, like, see, like the camera is pretty close to my face here, but if I was further back and I had a huge logo, that might be distracting. Um, you know, also kind of just making sure that just even, you know, going along with the attire that the background is like blurred if it's on a Zoom. Um, that's something that's like really important just so then they can just really focus in on you. That is the the major reason we want to have our attire be very kind of neutral colors um, because we want them to just be able to, you know, take you seriously and be able to just focus in on your answers and your demeanor rather than what you're wearing. Um, you know, just making sure that we are, even if it's not um, a very 100% professional um, interview that you're doing, you just still want to dress for that position. So, you know, no ripped jeans, just making sure that you're just very um, you know, presentable, presentable to that interviewer. Um, even if it is that one way interview, they are just taking in, you from just that video and that's all you have to present yourself. So attire is very important. Can we go to the next slide, please? And research. This is one of the biggest um, feedback we are getting from a lot of companies and facilities right now is that when people show up for interviews that they have not researched the facility, the company, anything about the anything about the company at all. So this is as big for you for an interview. This is for you to shine. Make sure that you look up the company. Um, you know, if you are talking to the recruiter or the hiring manager to schedule the interview, ask questions. Ask, you know, how many people will be in this this interview? You know, may I, may I know who they are so I can look them up? You know, it's, it is nice to be able to know who you're talking to so you can be able to know how to approach them. If you're, you know, it's one thing to talk to a recruiter that might not know the day ends of the actual position, or if you're talking to the CEO, they might have a different perspective. So being able to know who you're speaking with is very important. Um, you know, being able to ask questions of the hiring manager before the interview is very, very important. We recently had a graduate um, that one of our coaches was working with that did not ask about the pay until going into that interview. And then when they were in that interview, they found out the pay was too low for what they, you know, compared to what they're making currently. And they just actually stood up and left. And that actually is a really bad look because if there was another position later on that this person would want to interview for, they just probably, you know, gave themselves like a red mark in the the interview notes because they didn't ask the questions beforehand and they were wasting their time and the interviewer's time. So being able to do your research is really important. And I believe that California does have to legally post what the pay scale will be. So that is also 
also important to keep track of the jobs you're applying for so you can look back at the job descriptions to find those. Um, has anyone heard of Glassdoor? Just kind of a raise of hand in the, in the audience. I'm just kind of looking out. I see, I, I just see like a couple. So Glassdoor is a, a website that is, um, I think it's through Google and people can go in, employees or former employees can go in and rate the company that they work for, they formerly worked for. And it is actually a really great place to go and find out true information from employees about that company. It is really important to be able to research because if you, especially there's so many scammers nowadays, we, Coach Cisco and I just found a couple of weeks ago that um, somebody was reached out to by a company. We we looked them up and they you know had two star reviews and it just sounded like a scam and it just didn't sound like a very productive work environment. So being able to do those reviews will help you in the long run because ultimately you are interviewing them as well. This is your job. This is your career. You want to be able to take that to your own hands and see if that is a company that you really want to invest your time in. Um, you know, like I said, salary and pay rates are posted on job descriptions, but being able to, you know, just ask that of the hiring manager. So is there a wiggle room here? What do we think? Like, so they all, most of the recruiters and the hiring managers know where the company will go with their salaries and their pay rates. And they'll be able to tell you because they don't want to waste your time either. Um, and also researching the website of the facility, knowing their mission and values is something that is really important to know going into that interview. When they ask you, why do you want to work for us? This is a great way to go back. Well, I saw on your website that you really like to serve um, underserved communities in you know, the Los Angeles area. This is something I'm passionate about and this makes me feel very excited to work here. Being able to call back what you've read about that company will make you stand out. And that is something that employers are really looking for is somebody that really is compassionate and really driven to work for their company. And then I think we'll go to the next slide, please. And I'm gonna pass that on to Coach Krista. Awesome, thank you so much, Coach Kirsten. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So um, I'm gonna be talking about questions and then we're gonna jump into our role play so that you guys can kind of see us in action, um, showing you some responses that are effective and some that are not so effective. Um, so first, you know, a lot of people, when they think of interviewers, they think of you know them being asked questions. But interviews, we really want to be a two-way conversation. So especially when you get to the end of the interview and the interviewer asks you, do you have any questions for me? You always want to ask questions it shows that you're interested, that you're engaged, and that you are really passionate about potentially working for them. Um, so you want to make sure that you prepare a list of questions prior to the interview. You know, not all questions are going to be applicable to the job. So, you know, just jot some down, have some in mind. Um, some good ideas could be, you know, what qualities do successful medical assistants in your practice have? Can you tell me more about the onboarding and training process? Um, and then, of course, questions like, you know, what is the company culture? What would a day to day look like on this job? This is all information that will really help you when you're making um, a decision on if you want to work with them or not. Um, of course, you always want to ask, you know, when will I hear back? What are the next steps? Um, and then, you know, what is your contact information? If you don't have their contact information, it's good to get that so that you can send a thank you note um, just to show how much you appreciated their time. Um, and then, of course, you know how to prepare for questions that they might ask you. Um, so you can start out by just looking at common interview questions online, looking at questions and answers. Um, and then, you know, you want to make sure you're really selling yourself. You're really showcasing your skills and experiments, ex experiences and accomplishments. Um, something that you can do is practice with a friend or in front of a mirror or, you know, we all three of us are here to help you with mock interviews um, prior to your interviews so that you feel prepared and confident. Um, but especially, you know, with the mirror, especially with questions like tell me about yourself, you really want to have a strong, cohesive answer to. So I always tell my graduates, look in the mirror and say it over and over again until you feel confident, until you have the tone that you're looking for, until you really convey exactly who you are to that person. Hey, Krista? Yes. Coach Krista, can you give us an example of what you mean by tone in your responses? What, what, what kind of tone should I be portraying? 
Yeah, so you want to be enthusiastic and engaged. Um, so kind of how I'm talking right now, you know, you can hear that I'm excited to be here versus, you know, maybe if I am talking more like this, more monotone, you know, I don't maybe have the body language, um, you know, things like that are good things to keep out for. And also eye contact as well, as well with that. If you're looking around the room and not making eye contact, that would show that you're just kind of disinterested. So being engaged is really important. Yes, and that's a very good, oh, sorry. No, that's okay, go ahead. There, it's a really good tip, especially for whenever you're doing Zoom interviews. You want to just kind of occasionally glance up at the camera, kind of how I'm doing right now. You don't have to stare into it like this. You know, that would be a little um, unnerving, but, you know, just make sure that you're occasionally making eye contact with the camera to kind of um, make it look like, you know, you're having that in-person connection. Are there any questions that you would suggest that nobody ask? Like, what's the question that you should never ask? during an interview? Oh my goodness. Um, let me think of one. I would say, you know, like asking, um, will I have PTO? You know, like when, when's the soonest I can get PTO? Um, you know, if you do have a vacation or something planned in advance, that's totally fine. You can discuss that when you get to the offer stage. You do not want to discuss that in the interviewing stage. Right. Or just even asking, like, can I leave early every Tuesday because I have to take my kid to baseball? That's just something that's probably a red flag for interviewers because they think that you might uh, be already planning kind of ways to leave work early and you don't want to bring up a lot of personal stuff within the interview. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, Kirsten. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, so I think we're ready to go ahead and jump into the role play. Um, are you ready, Francisco and Kirsten? Yes. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that everybody sees all of you talking. And as you're watching, as you're observing this role play uh, unfold, what I'm going to ask you to do is put your comments in the chat and let's see uh, what you think is happening on these role plays. To Perfect. you. So what we're going to be doing today, everyone, we are going to be doing a little mock interview. You know, I'm going to play the person that's being interviewed and Krista's going to interview me. Uh, we chose four questions that I know it it hurts all of us. It's, a, it's done it to me before in the past and we already know what question it is. Tell me about yourself. We're also going to do why should we hire you? What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? I promise you these four questions is what gets everyone. And this is where word vomit sometimes comes out. And the wrong thing might be said or maybe not the right, you're not giving out, you know, your, your skills. So we're gonna do a little mock interview. First, I'm, you know, I'm gonna answer the I'm gonna answer Krista in a way that you know we shouldn't. And then the next time she asks me, we're gonna go ahead and um say the correct answer. But then again, like I mentioned, there is no correct answer. There's no correct way to be in an interview. It all depends on you, your skills, and how you really sell yourself. So we'll and teach you that. Me, and hopefully and after this, all you guys do take some. Yeah. And as you see things that are like really great or, you know, kind of not so great, just add them in the chat and we'll discuss them. Absolutely. All right, Francisco, let's get started. Let's do it. All right. Hi, Francisco. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I'm so excited to learn more about how you're qualified for this medical assistant position. Um, I just wanted to start out by asking, you know, tell me about yourself. Um. Well, hello, my first and foremost, you know, my name's Francisco. Uh, you know, recently I just successfully finished my medical assistant program and now I'm eager to secure a job to ensure my financial stability. Okay, thank you. All right, guys. So what, what do we feel is kind of the the main um, kind of point that he's trying to get across in this? So do we feel like this is a positive reaction, positive, um, you know, answering your question? Or do we feel like there are some red flags in this? If you want to put it in the chat, please do so. Yeah, like it looks like that he's kind of only so it's not a huge red flag, but yeah, like he's talking about money and not just about the the position and how this is kind of connected to what he what he wants. Awesome. So let's let's try that again. 
Awesome. Hi, Francisco. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I'm really excited to see how your skills align with this medical assistant position. Um, first off, could you tell me about yourself? Yes, of course. My name is Francisco. Um, currently, I'm working in retail, and I just recently completed my medical assistant program from Unitech College with a 4.0 GPA. My love for helping people and the hands of experience I've gained throughout my studies inspired me to pursue a career in the medical field. And I'm actually excited for the opportunity to bring my academic achievements and my passion for patient care to this role. Wonderful, thank you so much for that. That's certainly impressive, a 4.0 GPA. And I love to hear that you did your externship and gained that hands-on experience. Thank you. All right, so a little feedback on this second round. What do we think? We have a, are, are you reading? Um, so like, yeah, it's sometimes it's okay to have some ideas ready on hand to be able to get yourself kind of prepared just because sometimes you, you can be nervous and it is nice to have some notes to, you know, be ready on hand to present about yourself. Um, I really, I really like that there is some really great opportunities for him to talk about his success, but also where he wants to go with you know, this position. And I mean, it is nice to talk about. I mean, we all know we have to to make money to live, but the first response was really kind of focused in on that. This was really focused in on, you know, the positives and being able to, you know, bring that to the table. And you could tell that with Krista's response too. The first time it was just kind of like, okay, thank you for answering the question. But second time she was even repeating some of the stuff he said back because like that actually will stick in her head now because I, she was repeating it. She was impressed by it. So this is really, that was a really good um, example. Thank you. And then again, everyone, even though you probably don't have that full on experience, use your schooling, use your externship. Maybe you probably got certificates during while you were doing the course, or um, if you're a phlebotomist, maybe you did a venipuncture puncture better than, you know, another classmate and you taught the rest of the class. So always use, you know, anything that you probably have from your schooling and your externship that you think that would benefit you. Because again, remember, most of you guys are doing a career change. You don't have all that full experience. So this, these are good things that you guys can use during the interview as well. I'm glad that you mentioned the transition because career transitions are exactly what most of people who attended a Futuro Health program are experiencing. They're going from one type of job to a completely different job or from no work experience to their very first job. It is okay to say during the interview when they're asking you, tell me about you, you say, I'm in a great time of my life of transition. I'm going from A to B. I went to school to obtain my certification in blah. And, and what brings me to you is because this will be fulfilling that transitional dream, you know? And I'm excited to be here for that. Do you hear the difference? It's not rote, it's true. It's the real you. So don't be afraid to tell the real you. Just not all the personal details, just around your job, just around the career that what got you there. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. okay. There you go. All right. Hey guys, we, I think we have a plant in the audience. Michelle Davidson is um, mm -hmm. from campus and she is just like one of our favorite people on the planet. So we're so happy that she's here. Thank you so much, Michelle, mm -hmm. uh, for all you do for your grads and, and for, for us. Thank Carry you. on. All right, so we're going to go on to the next question. So interviewer Krista, dive in. Awesome. All right. All right, Francisco, um, tell me why we should hire you. Um, I believe you should hire me due to my uh, work ethic and my hardworking skills. Okay, thank you. All right, so what do we see with that that response? You can add in the chat. Do we feel like that was a very strong response, or you know, if we feel like there needs to be a little bit more? I like that, Oscar. Too vague. Um, you know, the the work ethic, the hardworking. That those are always kind of like buzzwords, but yeah, we need more. We need to know a little bit. Can you give us examples? Can you tell us a little bit? No passion. Those are really great reflections, you guys. 
And, oh, and I'm not even relating to the job description. Yeah, love that. Good. Let's try awesome. it again. <laughs> awesome. All right, Francisco, why should we hire you? I think you guys should hire me because of my positive attitude, my work ethics, and my passion about providing care to those in my community, which actually keeps me motivated and excited about doing my best work. That's wonderful. Can you share some examples of a time when you helped those in your community? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, due to my schooling, uh, you know, we uh, did my externship at a uh, facility where they help the, uh, you know, uh, the elderly or uh, people who, you know, just don't have those financial needs. So uh, putting the work ethic that I did there, that's where I actually learned that, you know, I really had the passion of uh, and wanted to work with these individuals. So that's why I'm also here today too, is that I want to put what I've learned through uh, my externship and through uh, the experience that I had at this facility to bring over to this company. Wonderful, thank you for that. I'm so glad to hear you have hands-on experience working with the community. We really value the community here and that would be a great um, attribute to have on our team. Awesome, so what are some um, takeaways from this last response that Cisco had? Everyone thought it was so great they can't even talk a little <laughs> bit like before, but then he kind of just like added in. And I love how Krista, as an interviewer, was prepared to ask a little bit more diving questions. And that's something that you, as you know, going into an interview, should be aware of, like you'd be ready for that. Sometimes they're going to ask you to explain a little bit more. Sometimes when you're done with a question, that doesn't mean that you're done with it. They might might kind of throw you some more, some more questions for it. So, you know, just always be prepared. And I know interviews can be so stressful and, you know, your brain can kind of shut down sometimes, and, but you can just know that they might just be like, can you explain a little bit more? Can you tell me a, a story that you did this? And he, he pivoted well, he dived right in and talked about um, the community that he'd be serving in that position. So true story. I talked with um, a member of the union, a leader within the SEIU UHW who was interviewing for um uh, what are they called? Ext not externships, but uh, internships, if you will. Uh, apprenticeships, that's it. And so she's interviewing these candidates and she asks the same question of every one of them. Tell me why you want this, this, extra, this apprenticeship. And do you know that she got more responses that said, and I quote, what's the apprenticeship about? They had no idea. So it's really important to understand the role, understand what that role does within the organization, how it supports the end user, which in our case is usually patients, and what you can do to help the organization, the hiring manager, and the patient. So that means that you need to start thinking less like an employee and more like a service provider, which is what you are. You're a professional healthcare member, and it's your talent your time, your skills, if you're in front of a hiring manager, you clearly found something in that job description that you really love or that you love something about the company. That is when you share it. And that's exactly what Cisco did. He connected all the dots between what he does and how it's going to help the employer, the hiring manager, the company, blah, 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 with passion and truth. So start thinking of yourselves that way. It's my time, it's my talent. Why do I wanna work there? And then communicate it. That's part of doing research. Mm -hmm. Really well done, Cisco. Yeah. All right. Just an FYI more. for everyone, Francisco, that was not scripted, that follow-up question. So he actually it really, wasn't. really well By the way, everyone, it and wasn't. handled that. I, it just came out <laughs> Great <laughs> job, Cisco. I made that question up. <laughs> all right so all the right. next two questions that we're going to go into debts to it's it's i this is the one that i know it gets all of us it's the strengths and the weakness all right let's go ahead and get started all right cisco could you tell me um some of your strengths um mm, i think my being a hard worker is one of my strengths all right. okay <laughs> What do we think of that answer? I'm not seeing much in the chat yet. Um, 
you know, some of those are just buzzwords and being able, yep, we have a thumbs down. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, yeah, like sometimes, you know, you say buzzwords, but can you back it up? You always need to be aware of, you know, yeah, we talk about transferable skills. We talk about, you know, all these communications, hardworking, work ethic, but can you talk about like a time that you've done it? And that's like really when you, um, we can all repeat back, you know, all the buzzwords, but when you actually put your, your, um, your experience where your, where your mouth is type of thing, then that is what will get you the next round of interviews. All right. Go ahead. You guys ready to try again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Francisco, can you tell me um, some of your strengths? Um, some of my strengths that I have, I believe, is being a hard worker. Uh, during my externship, I work eight to 10 hour shifts and being able to take on extra tasks while maintaining high productivity uh, really showcased while being there. That's fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that you had the resilience to work those back to back shifts and continue to take on those extra tasks. Thank you for sharing. All right. So what do we feel about that second response? Anybody hear him? Just bursting with energy. Yeah, there was an, ac yeah. an explanation of why he was a hard worker. It was a great yeah. response. Yeah. And, you know, like a lot of, some of you were probably like during um, COVID were working maybe not in healthcare, but like in retail and other, you know, uh, food service industries. You could talk about that as well, because that was definitely a stressful time. And we've all went through it and being able to talk about th that resilience as well. Um, you know, does help, especially if you had like a shorter externship, like we're talking about MA that has the longer ones, but like, you know, phlebotomists, you only have a week basically. And so you can also kind of go back onto those, but yeah, that was such a great, a great answer to be able to showcase, um, you know, your skills. Uh, Michelle says that she would advise matching at least three of the skills and strengths that needed for the job as well. And because we don't really have a job description and we're just kind of role playing here, that is that is a really great um, suggestion. Thank you, Michelle. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I would look at the, at the job description to see like the skills that they have. So when they do ask you this question, you'll think of the job description and be like, oh wait, I have these skills. You know, I'm good at communicating. I'm good at uh, hardworking. You know, I'm empathetic. Well, how are you empathetic? You know, so you always want to go into debts. And you know, some of you um, that I've spoken to, you guys do come from. You know. Uh, uh, you guys are uh, caregivers or you guys do, you know, so you guys do have that um, empathy and compassion. So use that when you guys are in the interview as well. So here's another thing I'm going to um, interject here. This is a, this is a place where people don't get offers when, when they don't do what Michelle says, because you've got to connect the dots. However, when you're looking at your strengths and you don't have past performance, meaning it's not on your resume, you have to focus on transferable skills. So the way that you do that, so if I'm uh, an MA and I'm trying to go into um, a different role, let's say it's a med tech role and I don't have that background. What I am gonna say, however, is based on the skills of my being able to track and document medications, even though I didn't administer them and worked with a nurse nurse assistant or nurse a, a nurse, um, I was able to manage all the documentation for my for my physicians, for my nurses. So I'm very clearly aware of what's going on there. And then I partnered with, you know, a pharmacist to understand medications a little bit better. Where did those dots connect? So it's about learning. It's about adoption of new new tools, technologies, behaviors, uh, capabilities, and tying them to the next job. This is how people get promoted all the time. They haven't done the job that they're getting promoted into, right? But they've demonstrated the capabilities of being able to do that job. So they're getting moved to that next job. This is something you've got to learn to do, or your confidence isn't going to get you that offer. Confidence gets offers. Tying the dots, connecting the dots between what you have done, translating it to what they need you to do is where that happens. This is critical. Thank you, Lee. Um, all right, we're going to go to the most dreaded question, I believe is. Uh, so Krista, you know, take us forward. 
Awesome. All right, Francisco, thank you for sharing your strengths. Um, could you tell me what your weaknesses are? Um, I don't think I have any weaknesses. Uh, maybe I, I talk a lot. All right. Let's, okay. <laughs> uh, let's talk about that. That response. I am sure we all kind of have the same feeling that it probably isn't the best one. <laughs> I, guys, I only say that because in my past role, I used to be a, a recruiter. This question, I would hear so many. Mm -hmm. And that was a, one of them, because it, it's a question that we panic. What is your weakness? Of course, in the interview, you don't want to say your weakness. You're there to, you know, showcase your strength. So that's a really big to the gut, that question. <laughs> and that's when you really want to want to prepare for. And yeah, Tabin, I, I agree with you. You can't say that your weakness is carbs. I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is one that you really kind of on your way in, you I really always, this is the one I always struggle with. And I always think about how can I take a weakness and kind of flip it into a strength or to show, showcase, showcase, like just, you know, my kind of true self, like, you know, just being able to, you know, not just talk, say I talk a lot. Um, all right, let's try that again. Awesome. All right, Francisco, can you tell me some of your weaknesses? Yeah, so I believe one of my weaknesses is I tend to get emotionally invested with uh, my patients that are struggling, which can sometimes affect burnout. However, I recognize it and I'm able to step back when it's needed. That's great. You know, I know we all kind of struggle with getting emotionally invested with our patients in healthcare. Um, you know, when you do step back, um, what are some things that you do to decompress or kind of separate yourself from that situation? So what I like to do, I like to take a deep breath and just, you know, remember that, this, you know, this is also, again, also my job and I have a job to do, but also I am human. So I do need to put aside, you know, um, how much I care for a patient and also make sure that I'm doing the work that I'm supposed to do. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. All oh. right. All right. Let's... What do we think about that one? Also, did, did anyone see what I what I did there? What 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 skill did I use? What did what did I let the interviewer know? What type of person am I? No Harry. comments. Oh, hold nope, on. Yeah, one. Yeah. Harry. 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 Yeah. Harry. Yeah. Yep, that's that's what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Do you guys see how I didn't put myself in a negative space? That's what that's what you kind of want to do. You'd never want to downplay any of your skills. And if that is a person that you are, you know, you are a very compassionate person, then that I wouldn't say it could be a weakness, but it can be, you know, something that, you know, can interfere with your work. You know, um, you know, a lot of these positions are at hospitals and, you know, some people end up do, you know, passing or a patient, you know, moves away. I know some of us, you know, uh, tend to get attached to them. So that's a really good example of, you know, what is your weakness? And, you know, for me, I used, you know, that I, I get too invested in the patient's lives. Which is probably very understandable. You went into healthcare because you care about people, because that you, you really want to be a part of, you know, helping change lives. And so being able to showcase, and then also knowing that there is burnout and burnout is real. Um, that's like probably the biggest thing that is, actually keeping people from healthcare right now because they they don't want to get completely burnt out. And so like being able to recognize that and being able to have those skills to be able to still do your job well, but also recognize when you need to take a step back is very important. Absolutely. And then Lee put in, um, what is one question you can ask to determine if you're advancing in the interview process? So, um, I'm trying to turn my camera on here, but it's not letting me turn my camera on for some reason. And I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably because I don't know how to do that from this particular view, but anyway, I, did, did I, um, so here's the thing. We just had another candidate lose an opportunity because they weren't able to tell their story. And everything that Cisco and Kirsten and, and Krista have demonstrated here is how to dissect your story and use it in various parts of the interview. 
If you do not know how to create your story, please work with your coach on that. These are called STARS, situation, tasks, actions, and results that need to be woven throughout your interview process from tell me about yourself all the way through to tell me why you want this job, right? Or tell me how you would do this job. You tie it back to something that you've done before. But there's one question at the end that very few candidates ask the interviewer. So remember when Krista or Krista said you should always or Kirsten said always ask questions always 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 at the end of the interview one of the questions you should ask after you've asked clarifying questions about the job the company or what have you is tell me what did you think about what do you think about me as a candidate for this position that is called a closing statement. You are trying, that's a very sophisticated question to ask. And the reason that most people don't ask it is because they're afraid of the answer, right? So that answer is very important to you because if they say something that allows you to uh, clarify what you meant, you may put yourself back in the game. Right. Or if they tell you, hey, I didn't hear this in your past performance. Did I overlook it? You've got that chance to build it back in or mm -hmm. they're going to say, well, we don't I don't really know. Then you ask the next question. What what about what about what what, what was it about what I said that didn't provide clarity for you? to give me an offer. So your goal, if you get a lot of interviews, it, raise your hands. Are you sending out your resume and getting a lot of interviews? If that is happening to you, then you need somebody to go in and work with you on that interview spot. Make sure that they are observing how you are answering these questions, what your body language is, your tone, everything. So work with one of these coaches to help you define that. If you are getting interviews and not offers, the problem is not your resume. The problem is how we're communicating during that interview or what we are not saying is more important that's not getting us that offer. What is it that we're not saying that is making it clear that we deserve that job? Does that make sense? Give me a, give me a thumbs up or a, something in the chat that says, yeah, that made sense or that really confused me. I'm seeing thumbs up. Okay, good. We're seeing a couple of thumbs up. So here's another here's another really good um, thing to look for. When you are closing out your interview, ask them, what are the next steps? So you've asked them if you are in consideration for the position. The next question to ask is, what are the next steps? When should I expect to hear from you? Don't let this go own this. This is your interview. And, and I'm also going to say on the flip side of that, remember that it is your time and it's your talent. You have a choice. It, ask them some interview questions. So a good question for them, somebody already put it in here. Why, why do you work here? You know, why do you like it here? Would you bring your friend or a family member into this organization? Is this a place that you would recommend to somebody else, to a new graduate? Because some facilities are really great with new graduates, while other facilities, not so much. These are all great questions for you to be asking. And these three coaches are here to make sure that you land your next job. And I'm going to stop talking. I do want to address, we did have one question come in um, for us. Do you still apply for jobs when you're waiting for your certification or, you know, do you wait um, when they say that they require certification and like a year of experience? How do we navigate that? It depends on, I would say, what field it is that you're going in. Um, I know with, the, you know, the medical assistant and the phlebotomy to actually be considered a, a candidate for those roles, you do have to have the full certificate and all that stuff. Um, same thing, I believe, with um, sterile processing tech. I know uh, that's a pretty uh, tricky one. So we do have any sterile processing techs. Um, I know now that I've already spoke to you, I probably gave you some accurate information of next steps of what to take. So if it's required for you to have that certificate and it states in the job description, I, I would recommend get the job description. Um, 
Now, depending also, say, for example, you know, based on your resume, what if you do have, you know, some kind of experience kind of in that field, say, if it's, uh, you know, patient care rep, you know, what if you were a, you know, uh, customer service or receptionist before, you know, you did administrative, you know, let's use your transferable skills to possibly see if we can get you into, uh, you know, maybe a position at the hospital as a receptionist. So there are alternatives to trying to get into where you're trying, you know, go, like in don't know where you are currently in your um certificate or you're still going to school for it um but yeah definitely i would work on getting fully certified to try to get you know unemployed and it goes the same way with any um health it people so if there's any health it people here um i know you guys do have that coursera uh course um my word of recommendation i know that some of those positions do state that you need to have you know one year experience bachelor's or master's you do want to make sure what are your next steps if you just have that it course are you going to go to school to get a master's degree are you gonna uh you know you always want to have also a little backup plan because not all of these um, certificates give full descriptions of what's going to happen next and if you are guaranteed are guaranteed a you know a job and i would ask one more thing and most of you aren't aware of this there's a, such a thing as called ofcp ofccp which is the office of something something compliance it's about personnel in the federal government especially in the medical field they they have minimum requirements for each position that must be met. There's non-negotiables. So when they say that you have to have X certification with X years of experience, it's because of that requirement. Now, they have multiple roles with varying requirements. So if it's asking for a year, a year of experience and the certification, here's what I would do. I would call that facility. I would get in touch with the HR people, whether it's recruiters or a hiring manager or somebody in the organization and say, is this the only entry level quote unquote type of job that you have? Or do you have something that accommodates people right out of school who are pending certification? Could you take me on? Do you have internships? Do you have apprenticeships? Do you have externships? How else can I work with your organization is the question you're trying to answer. So if you see a job, you don't meet the minimum requirements, buckle up, get on that phone, get on that email, go to those people and ask them, this is who I am. How can I fit into your organization? Don't be afraid to do that. They're going to see that as taking initiative and absolutely wanting to work with somebody who is that driven to create that opportunity for themselves. Does that make sense? Yes, I agree with Lee. And what's the worst thing that can happen? Them saying, no, it's not the end of the world. At least you took the initiative and you did it. Right. Okay. And it is now 545 or 245, wherever you are. So we are we are up of time. If you want to get a hold of Cisco or uh, any of our coaches here, we've got, I'll put their information up on the screen. I'll leave it there for a couple of minutes. And um, when you are, I think this is where we want to go. Okay. So yeah. I'll leave their information up there for a few minutes or a couple of minutes. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, coaches Kirsten and Krista and team lead coach Cisco. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And again, everyone. Hey, thanks, everyone. Talk to you guys. So if any of you guys, you know, have any interviews coming up, you guys want to get with us, answer any tricky questions that you guys feel, you know, you guys feel stuck, we are here to help you guys.